in the previous video I talked about the good of Total War Warhammer or at least the things that I have been enjoying in Total War Warhammer because there has been quite a few things that have been enjoyable in Total War Warhammer for me mainly talking about single player now I know my channel is mainly multiplayer focused because I think there is quite enough uh, single player content <laughs> out there and uh, my my main interest lies in multiplayer. I probably play more single player than multiplayer, which I always have played more single player than multiplayer. But there is just more, much more to get into, more interesting things to get into with multiplayer when you're playing against a human opponent. However, let's start with the bad of Total War or Hammer. Agents. Um, I forgot to say something in the good part where you're able to see to use your agents on the battlefield uh, however use your agent on the battlefield that that that's um, good somewhat interesting agent spam the AI will spam agents to counter that you have to spam your own agents what I'm doing here is uh, grooming Fildorf to be a vampire abode uh, increasing corruption by having a bunch of these uh, a bunch of a necromancer, vampires, banshee, white king. They're increasing the corruption. But it gets really, really tiresome seeing agents going to assassinate each other, agents going to assassinate heroes, lords, turn after turn after turn. And the agent spam in this particular particular campaign isn't that bad. The main reason being I'm not at war with that many factions and once I go to war with someone, I kill their agents off as quickly as possible and I kill them off as quickly as possible because I don't want a small one province faction to go and agents spam me and, and make my make, make my um, my uh, von Karstein wounded for every single turn. So the agents, uh, the ability for every agent to go and try to assassinate someone and disrupt and stuff like that I am not a huge fan of the way agents work in this game. Another thing, uh, here's the entire, let's see if we can look at the entire world map, yep. This is the entire Warhammer world map. Um, over here you have a mix of dwarves and greenskins, over here you mainly have the human provinces of uh, Bretonia. Here you have Estalia, Tilea, the Empire. Uh, over here you have in Sylvania you have the vampire counts, you have uh, dwarves in the mountains, you have goblins and orcs over here. Uh, these are the realms of chaos where you have the marauders from the chaos wastes, inv invasions uh, come down. Uh, here is Kislev. Now, one of the worst things about Total War Warhammer, in my opinion, you... you, you, you in the previous video, if you, if you watched that, you heard me talk about the diversity. You, you feel like you're using a different faction with different strengths when you're using each, each faction because they're fairly diverse. That is true to a certain extent. The human, the human factions are identical aside from Betonian Empire. Estalia has an Empire roster. Tilea has an Empire roster. Kislev has an empire roster and every single empire every single empire province or uh, I forget the name but every single empire let's call it sub faction every single empire sub faction that in the warhammer game have their distinct armies their distinct Units, their distinct strengths and weaknesses, they all have the same generic empire roster. Something, something empire. The same thing with the border princes. Uh, the border princes, they have a distinct roster, different units from the empire. They are the same as the empire in this game. Tilea, distinct, very different from the empire. Again, identical to the empire in Total War Warhammer. Estalia, again, distinct roster of units the exact same roster as the Empire in Total War Warhammer. That is a huge immersion breaker for me and it makes the map a whole less, interest, a whole less interesting. Uh, instead of fighting 
against several different human armies, you're essentially fighting against the same human army each and every time. It's an Empire army. Aside from Bretonia, Bretonia have their own roster, but the roster is very, very lackluster. The same thing with the Warriors of Chaos. They are not divided into to, to Kor, Nurgle, uh, Slanesh, Sinch, which could give huge diversity in the Chaos armies. You would be facing melee armies, magic armies, resilient armies, and uh, armies with a psychological focus. However, since they went the short route and just said, oh, let's, let's have Chaos Warriors in there, uh, you're getting one something something Chaos army. So, diversity is hugely lacking on the map and it makes it far less interesting it makes the warhammer world the old world here far less interesting than it could be and uh, it's sort of immersion breaking as well because you're traveling really far from the empire from nordland down to the western border princes and you find the exact same units the exact same armies it makes the game even more repetitive. The game is repetitive in nature, but it makes it even more repetitive that it's like that. Now, the the undead here, they have an, the ability to raise dead. They have the ability to raise dead on the battlefield. Magic is bad. <laughs> and not just that it's in here, it obviously has to be in, in the Total War Warhammer game. But it's not particularly well made, considering how it works in, in, in the base game and how complex it can be. For example, if you're here on the campaign map and you've suffered casualties from a unit of Crypt Ghouls, uh, you have to wait for that unit to replenish. Instead of, let's say, drawing from the Winds of Magic, casting a spell and racing the Crypt Ghouls. During battle, you can only raise a new unit of zombies. Um, if the unit in question that you want to replenish has taken casualties before it, it um, goes to battle, then that unit can't be replenished above its starting strength. So let's say I had one Grave Guard here and I'm, I'm using... Uh, I'm wanting to replenish this grave guard. I won't be able to able. I won't be able to do that, and that takes away a sort of a key undead tactic of of as long as there's something to to reanimate, you can just keep 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 animating it. <laughs> essentially, uh, that's something I was a, a bit disappointed at, but it's certainly not not game breaking in any way. Another thing that I found less than impressive: the cities. Uh, this is Null, one of the greatest cities in the Empire. Legendary battles have been fought here. And look at this. It looks like a five-year-old five year old build it with, built it with Lego bricks. Uh, and let's have a look at Altdorf. Oh, it's essentially the same. And these are level five city-states. They do not look impressive whatsoever. And it's a recurring theme with all of the cities. Uh, they, they look like shit. Complete shit. At least on the outside. Far too small. Horrible models. No diversity. And it seems like a lot of things in this game has been rushed. Here's the uh, the, the capital. Altdorf. It certainly doesn't look like any capital. Just a few. Just a few wooden stakes here around the city on the, on the outside. Not impressed by that at all. Another thing. I showed you the how... how I mean the... The cities look, the cities look um, pretty damn good on the inside. However, so going into the Battle of Magritta here, uh, which is a province in Istalia. Yeah, the the city looks pretty damn good. Uh, looks huge. However. The only area you can fight in is this, surrounded by the white line. Not the red line anymore, but the white line. So there are essentially only a few alleys down here you can fight. And this is the central square. And all of this is just for aesthetics. And wow. I mean, if you look... Uh, 
we used to have several layers in, in like in medieval you used to have several layers in a siege and warhammer would be great for that with flyers being able to fly over several layers of walls and cannons being able to pound them down and so on and so forth however uh, the sieges in, in total war warhammer are bad and another thing that's bad I'm going, just going to advance here and uh, see what happens with the tower. Uh, the towers in this game are exceptionally powerful. To the point where, yep, they are firing on my hex wraiths. Uh, to the point where, look at what happens to my black knights here. Uh, as I'm just running them around. Uh, sure, there are some other units over here, but once towers get upgraded... I did manage to reach the uh, reach the walls from that tower there. Uh, once once towers are upgraded, you can have uh, an army camping the white line here, and you'll see the 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 uh, towers will just completely decimate uh, decimate your army. Which I mean, sure, it's it's uh, it's realistic that defenders would be able to do a lot of damage to. An advancing enemy however range is a bit of a problem here because since the map is so cramped you can never be out of range of the tower which I mean I w obviously wish that you would be able to stay out of range of the tower uh, and send some troops forth but since the map is so small and the range is so great for the tower uh, for the towers that's not really possible so I'll just concede defeat there Uh, something else that's quite bad, uh, the quest battles are horrible, e exceptionally bad. Uh, you will have better battles in um, just standard campaign meeting armies on the battlefield. The quest battle armies are mainly, consi mainly consists of low tier troops camping somewhere, maybe a few flanking units, uh, low quality flanking units. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really too impressed by, by, by the quest battles. They are far less than immersive. But the, the biggest gripe I have with Total War Warhammer is how shallow it is. Uh, the upgrade tree, the, or the, the tech tree, let's see, that's not, that's not the tech tree, that's the tech tree. It's very uninspiring. Uh, minus 20% casualties. It's always in percentages. Minus, minus something percent this, minus something percent that. And you do not get any bonuses, as far as I can tell, from having researched the entire book of Archon, for example. Uh, the, the research is, is very uninspiring and less than immersive. The same thing with the management of the cities. Uh, not very engaging fun uh, a huge step back from from medieval 2 and the the total sum of these experiences uh, at least for single player uh, makes total war warhammer uh, superficially fun um, experience it's visually engaging however at its core the mechanics are very shallow. They seem to be uh, rushed. Most of this game seems to be rushed. Uh, and although they've nailed the feel of the Warhammer world visually with a lot of things, uh, for this to be a, a good single player experience, we either need the Creative Assembly to flesh out Total Warhammer in a way that they're probably never going to do. Uh, or mods, and mods are of course going to be able to do that, but since the game is so shallow, both in terms of faction diversity on the campaign map and uh, city management, magic and technology, it seems like at some point we're going to get a lot of DLC, flashing out the factions, uh, giving giving factions more more diverse troops as they are released as dlc uh, but you know what i think about that uh, as far as total war warhammer being worth it i would wait until it che it's cheaper it's been patched and there is more 
DLC available for cheap because although you're going to probably going to enjoy the Total War Warhammer experience you're probably not going to enjoy it for that long so my review of the single player experience as a 6 out of 10 uh, it's 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 slightly better than an average single player experience probably because I like Total War and probably because I like um, Warhammer but there are some major gripes that that makes this game something that I'm, I'm not like looking forward to playing one more turn. Uh, I've basically played <laughs> to be able to make this review. Strength and honor.